Okay, so welcome to week 14 of English 2575 Technical Writing. Uh, this is our penultimate week of the class, meaning it's the next to last uh, week of lecture. Um, and so in today's class, what we need to do is talk about you know the final due dates for everything, um, which I'm going to extend as far as possible, but also give you some incentives to get things in early uh, if that's a possibility. Because um, I certainly don't want to take anything away from folks, um, but if you do finish early, I do um, want to recognize that in some way uh, with offering some bonus points for that. And um, we'll talk about the presentation and the website and the report on collaboration. Okay. Uh, so in our last week's lecture, I talked about the collaborative projects. Um, we continue talking about the analytical research report, which you should be working on together now, doing that research to investigate your problem, get some background on it, where it came from, how it came to be, and then some solutions to that problem, right? I and mean, that's the whole point of this analytical research report, is that you identify a problem, you tell us what it is, how it works, what all the ins and outs of it uh, through your research, and then you try to find some solutions to it also through your research. Now these other components, the oral analytical research report and the website, I would like you to think about as simply summarizing adaptations or transformations of the analytical research report into different media. So. The analytical research report is a written document. Uh, it has a certain kind of formatting, which I've shown you before, and I've pointed you to some links online that give you other examples. And this is all a written visual layout type document. You know, there's a certain form to it, and everything that goes into it is in writing, and you can supplement that you know, with some images. You may draw some things, you can take photographs of your own, um, you may do screenshots depending on what your topic is. But the idea is that it's primarily a written document though. Now, when we're talking about being able to adapt that much longer written document into other media, we have to think about what are the affordances and the constraints of these other media. And when I mean affordances and constraints, these are two important words that you should put in your notes, commit to memory, be ready to use them when you're on Jeopardy one day, is that the affordances are all the strengths of a technology. They're all the ways that you're able to use a technology. And when we're talking about media as a type of technology, it's like, what all can we do with it? You know, how does it work? What are all the advantages to using that particular medium? And then constraints are the things that we can't really do with a technology. They're the things that we're limited by with that technology. So if we think, for example, with the written analytical research report, you know, a lot of the affordances that we can pack a lot of information into it because we can do that in writing. We can you know, try to strengthen the writing um, through our research, citations, references, we're able to supplement it also with images, whether they be drawings, illustrations, photographs, screenshots, etc., in order to illustrate, to show what it is we are telling people, describing to people in all of our writing. Now, when we think about like a presentation, we're able to layer on some additional things. So if you think of a presentation, uh, like using PowerPoint, for example, first off, you, the speaker, are standing in front of the audience and you're able to speak, you're able to use your voice. And you're not just using your voice, you're not just simply stating facts and just saying things all the same way, but you're also using nonverbal information to layer on some more uh, meaning, some more engagement with your audience. These can be things like your hand gestures, your body posture, the way that you move on the stage or in front or behind the podium. It can also be the way that you speak, whether you speak fast or slow. Uh, if you accentuate, you know, give some Im impact to particular words. Uh, if you height, you, you loud in your voice or soften your voice, 
all of these things add something. These are all affordances uh, of the presentation as a medium. But now, in addition to you being in front of the audience to, to speak, uh, much the same way as you know, before the pandemic, I would have been in front of you leading class, always giving presentations each you know, class that we meet. There's also PowerPoint, or in our class's case, you'll be using Google Slides, um, which is a collaborative form of uh, the presentation software like PowerPoint or you know, Apple Pages. I mean, not Pages, but um, Keynote. And the idea is that you're able to use in the background visual information to try not just to engage your audience, but to layer information by giving like you know, cues to your audience, extra keywords, descriptions, quotes, uh, illustrations, pictures, etc., to strengthen your message with your audience. Now, in addition to thinking about the, you know, I guess one of the constraints then with the presentation that we should be mindful of is how long we're able to maintain our audience's engagement with what we have to say. The longer that we speak, the longer that we're trying to you know, talk with someone else, if that person isn't completely receptive and totally invested and interested in what we have to say, eventually we're going to reach a point of diminishing returns. So the idea is you want to make your presentation hit within a particular window of time where you're maintaining engagement with your audience, but you're also not going on so long that you lose that engagement. And so in our class's case, what I would like you to aim for for your presentation is between 7 and 10 minutes. That means your presentation should be no shorter than 7 minutes, but it should also be no more than 10 minutes. Now, on the short side, do, it doesn't bother me too much. I mean, obviously, if you're speaking for less than seven minutes and there's five of you in the team and everyone is expected to say something, you're not really going to be saying all that much. Because uh, if you think about it, and this is something you can put in your notes to be thinking about when you write your script for your presentation, one page double spaced of writing takes about two to two and a half minutes to speak. So if you are only given seven to ten minutes to speak, you only have, you know, uh, at most, you know, four, I mean, if you spoke fast, maybe five pages, no more than that. I mean, you'd have to speak very fast to get through that, uh, worth the material. So the idea is that you, you want to maximize what you're able to do within that short period of time. Now, on the top end, the 10 minutes, the reason why I'm concerned more about that, and you should be too, is when you are asked to give presentations, whether it be at the company you work for or if you go to a professional conference, um, there's going to be a time limit placed on your presentation. And it's important for you to hit whatever mark they give you for that for a number of reasons. First, if you go over how much time you're allotted, it looks extremely unprofessional. People will notice and it will look very bad on you. Second, when you go over time, if the moderator doesn't cut you off, which if you were in like one of my conferences or symposia, uh, you know, like I held this past Thursday, I'll cut you off in a heartbeat because I want to be fair to all the other people presenting. Because if we're only having our you know, conference for you know, from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m., and we need to fit in however many presentations, we want to give everybody a chance to engage in Q&A, questions and answers, discussion. Uh, if you take away from someone else's time, that's being very unfair to them. So you want to always make sure that you're mindful of the time uh, and that you're hitting that mark. Now, with this other uh, collaborative component, you have the website, uh, which I went over in our last lecture. But again, just to kind of recap with that, uh, the website I want you to build using OpenLab uh, because it's freely available. You already have an account uh, to use with that. Um, and it's also based on WordPress, which gives you something that you can claim on your resumes that you know how to write content 
uh, for WordPress. So with the website, all that I want you to do with it, just like with the presentation, which the presentation is simply to summarize your analytical research report. What are the highlights? Briefly describe the problem, give us a little bit of background on it, and then present your solutions to it. That's all you gotta do. With the website, similarly, I want you to include you know, um, a little bit of information about the problem, a little bit of information about your found solutions, but the important thing is going to be that landing page that I described. That's the first page that you see when you click the link to go to your um, Open Lab project site. And that landing page should include um, the embedded video for your presentation. It should include a link to your uh, analytical research report that is publicly viewable so that someone just click the link and be able to read your work. And it should also include a brief synopsis, an abstract. Um, I didn't, I don't think in our last lecture I gave you a hard number on that, but that abstract, I would you know, aim for being between 150 and 250 words. Okay, very brief, doesn't have to be even a full page of writing, uh, double spaced. The idea is just encapsulate what your project is about. All right, so let's go into a little bit more detail about the due dates, and then we'll get back to the presentation website, and then finally I'll talk about that report on collaboration. So first off, make sure you put this into your notes right now, and I'll also obviously put this on our Open Lab site, but it, it's important to put in your notes so that you'll help remember this. So for our class, um, you know, this week I'll be giving a lecture, and then next week, um, which, let's see, this week is the 25th of November, so the next week's class, the second, is going to be um, the, yeah, week, December 2nd to December 9th, is going to be the last lecture that I give in the class. I'll still obviously be here to answer questions and work with anybody that needs help, uh, but this is, you know, next week is going to be the last week of these lectures. Um, for the class, so keep that in mind. But what I want to point out is Monday, December 21st, okay? This is going to be the last day that I accept anything from you and your teams uh, to be graded for our class, because shortly after that, I have to grade everything and get the grades put into CUNY first so that you get your grades and you know how you did. So what I want you to keep in mind first, for all of your individual projects, okay, so that includes the 500 word summary, that includes the 750 word expanded definition, that includes the 1500 word instruction manual, and it also includes the um, weekly uh, writing assignments. All of those have to be done by December 21st, okay? And you know, with those three major individual projects, those I'll have all graded, so you'll be able to click on, check your grade over on the left, and be able to see those. I'm currently still grading the instructional manuals that have been turned in. There's a number that haven't been turned in too. Um, so as soon as those start coming in, I'll grade those, and you'll be able to click, check your grade, to see how you did on those. So that's all the individual stuff. Now, obviously, the other big part of your grades is going to come from the collaborative project. And with the collaborative project, the day that everything is going to be due will be that Monday, December 21st. Okay, that'll be the last day that I accept things. But now let me talk about uh, some of this incentive um, that I wanted to offer you guys. Now, I only want you to consider this if you think that your team is in a good place as far as your project is concerned. Something I've been mentioning to students that have been you writing me about some of the other projects in the class is a really great piece of advice uh, that I received from a mentor in graduate school. And what he told me about projects in classes is that you know, at a certain point you should simply try to make it good enough. 
okay? And what I mean by that, and what he meant by that, and I'm passing on to you, is that you have a finite amount of time and energy to, do, to invest into your, your projects in my class. And the same is true for all of your other classes. The same is true for your work, for your personal life, everything. So with your classes that you're trying to juggle, what you can keep in mind is try to make it good enough so that you know, it's of the quality that you think reflects the kind of grade that you want, which I hope is going to be an A. But ultimately, that's the decision you have to make about you know, how much time and energy that you're able to put into something. Uh, because obviously, if you're taking five classes, uh, the the amount of time and energy you have is not going to be the same as maybe someone who's only taking one or two classes. But also your prioritization of which class you're going to invest the most heavily in plays a role in this. But the reason also to consider like making things good enough is that for the projects in this class, I also understand all these other things that you have going on. My concern is whether you're paying attention to the, the detail aspects of the work that's important, that you're adhering to like professional styles and standards with APA, and ultimately that you're you know, being able to reflect the things that I talk about in lectures for all the different assignments. There's a time after the class where you could always improve upon anything that you've done in my class to get it ready for your professional portfolio to use as a writing sample for a job um, to maybe reuse in some other way that you may want to post it to like your linkedin.com profile to show off what you know and what you can do but at least for right now in our class making it good enough is really the goal so that you know you're done with the class you get the grade that, you, that you're aiming for, but I don't want you to like blow a gasket. I don't want you to overstress and overthink uh, the work that you're doing, which can lead you down uh, you know, the rabbit hole uh, and get you lost on aspects of the work that you're doing that may not be as important as they, they, other, you know, they could be in other circumstances. So focus on, you know, especially for your collaborative projects, focus on the problem, focus on the research, and focus on you know, putting it together using the professional styles that we've you know, practiced so far this semester with APA. Uh, follow the models that I give you. Uh, and I think that you together as a team will be able to produce something that's good enough uh, to achieve the grade that you, I think that you want in the class. Now, as you're working through that and getting, you're looking towards December 21st, this is the incentive that I wanted to give you. If it's good enough and you're done early, I will offer each team one bonus point for each day that you turn in your collaborative project. And I'm talking about everything, it has to all be turned in at once but I'll give you one point added to your collaborative project grade for each day that you turn it in early up to seven points. That was essentially turning it in one week early. So you turn in one day early, you're gonna get a one point bonus added. You turn it in three days early, that's a three point bonus. And then the maximum you can get is if you turn it in a week early, you'll get seven points bonus added to your collaborative project. Now again, this is only if you think it's good enough and it's ready to go. If you need that extra time before December 21st, take it. I mean, there's no penalty for that. I'm, you're gonna give you as, uh, your full credit that you earn on your project if you turn it in Monday, December 21st. Um, but if you turn it in early, you can earn some bonus points. Okay, that's all I'm saying. I don't want you to think you're losing anything um, this is just an incentive to get it in early, which will give me a chance to grade it early um, and then be able to devote my you know, grading time to the other projects as they come in. But if everybody turns in their projects Monday, December 21st, 
that's also fine. So I don't want you to think it's in any way reflecting poorly on anyone if you don't take advantage of this. It's just that it's an opportunity if you as a team choose to go for it. All right, so let's take a look at the presentation. So make sure you have something to write with and I'll include some links whenever I post the lecture uh, that you'll that may be useful for you for this. I already posted some uh, last week, which maybe I should pull up real quick. So just looking at uh, last week's lecture, I included some links here. Uh, for the analytical research report presentation. I gave you this uh, YouTube video of life after death by PowerPoint, which is very funny, but also teaches you some important things about not going overboard with using your presentation software, which in this case we're going to be using Google Slides, which I'll bring up in a second. Um, now, this is the idea that I want you to use with producing your presentation. So make sure you make notes on this and replay this if you need to. So for the background of your presentation, much like you know, you're know, you going to be giving obviously a uh, video conference recorded presentation, much like I'm giving you right now, what I would like you to do for the background for the slide deck, the slides that you use for your presentation, I'd like you to use Google Slides. That's part of Google Drive and Google Docs. Um, it's essentially you know, Google's version of PowerPoint. But what's cool about it is just like uh, Google Docs, where you're where you're writing and you can write collaboratively, meaning all the team members can be looking at the document on their respective computers simultaneously. The same is true for Google Slides, and so. People can be working on the same set of Google Slides simultaneously, and you be able. You can use another medium to be talking simultaneously, like you could be uh, talking on the phone as you're collaboratively editing your Google Slide Deck together. But it's important that everybody can work on it together, so that if you were to say, you know, each person that's going to speak which everybody in the team has to speak, but each person could be responsible for like one slide of your slide deck um, so that you know, they can type in or, or enter what information needs to be put there uh, for their part of the presentation. But now keep in mind that you don't want to put on your slide everything that you say during your presentation, uh, which is a point that's made in the Life After Death by PowerPoint uh, video. What you put in your Google slide uh, for each your know, talking point in your presentation should anchor what you have to say, but not be everything that you have to say. Because if that were the case, then the text will probably be very tiny. The point of the slide is simply to you know, engage your audience, help them you know, maybe capture some of the keywords that you're going to be speaking to, maybe some important names that you want to drop. Uh, it could also include an illustration or picture, again, that you made on your own or screenshot that you made on your own uh, that you want to talk about you know, during that slide. So you'll be using Google Slides for that background uh, slide deck for your presentation. So how are you going to be putting this together? So what I would recommend and I think this is the easiest way. If you as a team come up with a different way, it, it's totally fine. Um, like for example, I'm using OBS right now on Linux Mint uh, to make this presentation for you. Uh, so there's a lot, you know, there's different ways you can go about making your presentation video. But I think for uh, this project, since you are all in different places and need to do this together as easily and quickly as possible, what I would like you to do is use uh, Zoom, which you can sign up for free, you know, zoom.us. Uh, you probably already have a Zoom account for your other classes, but if you don't, it's you know, very easy to uh, create an account for free uh, and then download the software. 
But what I would like you to do is one of the team members would want to host a meeting, and with a free account, you can host a meeting up for up to 40 minutes. Uh, but for your presentation, again, it only needs to be seven to 10 minutes long. And whoever starts the meeting to host it would then also be able to record the meeting. And what I'll do is I'll include a link. Um, you already got a link there, Zoom help, audio, video sharing, and recording, which has the particular link that I wanted to show you. Uh, but I'll add that um, to this week's lecture. The, there's a page, local recording, uh, that explains in detail like how to record a meeting and you'll be able to save that video. So I'm talking about recording a meeting. Well, your meeting is going to be your presentation. Each person in your team will speak for part of your presentation. Uh, you will uh, you have your, each person will have their screen shared, uh, which is a feature of Zoom. When they share their screen, they'll want to show the Google Slides, or the host of the meeting can simply uh, share their screen, which this will probably be easier, is have the host share their screen with the Google Slides, and as the host goes through the slides, click, 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 each team member would then talk about you know, what they are assigned, you know, what is delegated to each team member to talk about for that slide. After you've gone through all your slides, you say thank you, stop the recording, that will produce an MP4 file that, that you can then use. You can edit it if you want, if you know how to do that. Uh, but you can also very simply uh, then move to uploading it. And as I mentioned before, on your website, I want to see your presentation. So the two easiest places that you can choose from to host your video would be YouTube and Vimeo. Uh, you can create an account that's simply for this project. I, I don't want you to feel like you have to use an account that you might be using for something else. Probably the easiest would be YouTube, but I know some people have you know, strong feelings about Vimeo as well. Uh, but just use a free account to drag your MP4 file into YouTube or Vimeo once you've logged in. It'll upload the video and you'll want to get the shareable link from your video wherever you host it at, whether it be on YouTube uh, or on Vimeo. And with that link, you go back over to your Open Lab project site, which is your team's website, edit the first page, the landing page, and paste that link right there. And WordPress will automatically understand that that link to your video on YouTube or Vimeo should be embedded and it'll appear just like this video right here on Zoom's um, um, help section. It'll embed it automatically just like that. Uh, and just to also illustrate, uh, you know, like what it looks like, I'll go to a new tab and go to my um, YouTube channel. And so because I had the symposium this past week, uh, I edited each of the sessions and posted each session as a separate video on my YouTube um, channel. And so like if I were to just click you know, this one video, and pause it, but you can see up here at the top, you know, I got this link. And this is the shareable link that you would want to use. Uh, it's basically youtube.com slash watch question mark V equals and then it has that code that corresponds to that particular video. Uh, yours would be different, but you can just copy that whole link, control C on the keyboard, and then when you're over on your Open Lab project site, and I'm just going to do this for illustration. I'm going to start a new post. I'll just call this landing page. Probably be better to say um, introduction, right? That sounds better, doesn't it? I click in the 
content area underneath the title. I paste it, I just press Control V on my keyboard, and there. You see the video is automatically embedded uh, for someone to watch. And then once I publish this page, then that page will start with that video right up at the top. And someone can click, click play and watch it. Now, just to be clear, uh, there should only be one video for each team. Okay, so as a team, you make this video. Now, this is probably going to be the most challenging part of the project because I know everyone has like got different work schedules, different life schedules, etc. So you should start planning right now, thinking ahead, when can you all meet together, say in two or three weeks? Is that right? One, two, yeah, three would be pushing it, but definitely you can still do that. Um, so that you can set aside a time, a day and time, where everybody can get on Zoom, you have your host share their screen so that you can see the slide deck and they will be responsible for going through the slides and then everybody in the team will have a chance to speak. And I keep talking about like what the stuff that you're going to say during your presentation. Well what I want you to do for this is because you're summarizing your analytical research report. Remember that analytical research report is like four to six thousand words long. You can't say all those words in seven to ten minutes unless you're like an auctioneer. So what you need to do is think about that first project in our class where you summarized a scientific or technical article. For your presentation, you are essentially summarizing your scientific or technical analytical research report. And so you want to only talk about like the highlights. You don't have to get into a lot of details. You don't have to give like, you know, the names of um, all the writers that you might be citing from unless you're actually citing them during your presentation. You certainly don't give, need to give the names of their articles or books, that sort of thing. Uh, you can simply say according to so and so, and then say you know what it is that's important that they added to uh, the discourse, the discussion surrounding the the topic you selected. And then you know at the end of your presentation, someone should say you know uh, on our website, and you can give a link in your Google like the last Google slide to your Open Lab project site. So that someone can like you know, follow that link and then access your full analytical research report, which you will have not only the video of your presentation there, but you'll also have your um, a link to your analytical research report uh, as well as let's see analytical research report. You have the video for the presentation. Uh, yes, so I mean that's they'll be able to access like all your references there, they're going to have all your research there, all the, the, the bulk of everything is going to be on that website. Um, so you don't have to do all that work that's in the analytical research report in your presentation. Just the highlights, just the essence, just the important points uh, will be enough. So what I would suggest that you do is each team member should write a script for what it is they're going to say. Now, each team member shouldn't have you know, more than you know, one double space page of script to read from or that much text to say, because I know some people may not want to use a script, in which case you can memorize your points or have note cards that just have the main points. But Consider this, with a script, you're going to be able to stick to your time much more accurately than if you use note cards or if you try to remember all the points you want to make from memory. Because the problem with note cards and working from memory is that you want to embellish, you want to say more. Um, and rightfully so, but it's an easy way to eat up a lot of time. And so you don't want to take away from your team's time because you begin saying too much. A script is a good way of keeping you on track and on time 
uh, and not you know, taking up too much time uh, in, in the, the whole presentation. Again, your presentation is just a summary of the main points in your analytical research report. Now, let's get back over to the website. I'll get rid of this later. Now, I'll give you some links to these so you can look at them more closely um, in this week's lecture, okay? Um, but here uh, are some of my previous students' websites. Now, I want you to keep in mind, you need to pay attention to this lecture and my other previous lectures to know what you should be doing on this project. Because this, these examples I'm showing you from my previous class were from before the pandemic. They were when students were able to do the presentations, for example, during class time, which you're not able to do. So that's why I've had to change some of the things that you're doing uh, for this assignment that they didn't have to do. So don't follow what they've done exactly, but at least as far as the website is concerned, the way it's designed, I think will give you some good ideas about how to make yours you know, mirror the, the approaches that they took. So again, the, your website is going to be an open lab project site. Um, and it only summarizes the report. Okay, you don't have to be writing a whole bunch of new stuff, new research that isn't already in the report. You take what you've done in the report and then you summarize it uh, for the audience of your website. Now again, your website should have a landing page. That's the first thing that someone sees. It needs to have a separate about page and that'll have the biographies, little biographies for each team member. There should be a problem page that describes the problem and maybe a little bit of background about the problem that you're researching. And then a solutions page. And this will be the solutions that you found in your research to solve the problem that, that you focused on in your collaborative project. So let's look at this first one. This is um, on solar panel manufacturing and its waste. So I'm going to go click on website. So with this team, um, they used a picture that they had taken of solar panels for like their header image here. They chose this color scheme uh, of like red text over the, the bluish black panels. So it stands out. And you can see here that they created these pages, introduction, problem, solutions, and then about us. So if you click on their introduction page, this is kind of like what you're going to have written on your landing page. It briefly describes what your project is about. The other things that you would have here that's different from theirs is that you're going to have your presentation video embedded and you're also going to have a link that goes over to your analytical research report. Now that link to your analytical research report, um, I'll show you again real quickly. So here I have just like you know a sample Google Doc. It's going to, we're going to use this in the stead of your analytical research report. What I want you to do is click on share in the upper right hand corner and then ignore all this and down here at the bottom get link. I want you to click change to anyone with the link. Anyone with the link and it should by default say viewer. That means anybody with the link will be able to view your document. You copy this link and then over here in your um, landing page, you would want to write something to the effect of read our team's analytical research report here and then highlight analytical research report here. And then that's going to bring up some options. And one of those will be the link icon. It'll look like a little chain link. You click that, you paste in the link you just copied from 
Google Docs and then you click enter on the keyboard or the enter icon next to the link on your WordPress site and that'll create a link for those words that'll take someone to your Google Doc so that they can read it. That link is important because if I don't have that access to your analytical research report I will not be able to grade it. So it's very important that you make sure you make that link correctly and that you test it with someone who is not a team member to make sure that they can access it like on a different computer. Okay? You don't want to be you logged into your own account on your own computer clicking a link and thinking oh everything seems to work because with someone who doesn't have access to your account, namely me, I may not be able to access it. So make sure you do test everything about your website, including the link to your analytical research report, because I will be visiting your website on OpenLab, I'll be watching your presentation there, and I'll be clicking that link to go to your analytical research report in order to grade it. If these things don't work, that creates a problem, doesn't it? So you want to make sure that those links, the embedded video, all that works properly. Uh, and as you're doing that, if you need help with some of these things, I'm including links to the help documentation on OpenLab and Zoom. Uh, I'll add uh, links that I find for like your know, sharing documents uh, for Google Docs um, because it's, you know, obviously you need to figure out how these things work as well. Okay, this says that we're at a point now where I don't want to be holding your hand through everything, but after exhausting all of these help resources, if something weird is going on, let me know. But please, if you do ask for my help, don't send me an email saying, oh my God, everything is going wrong. Tell me in concrete terms what is wrong from what you observe, what you've tried to fix the problem, what you've done to try to fix the problem, and also what you're seeing. You might take a screenshot. You want a, you know, a computer, like on, on Windows, the easiest thing to do is you know, press print screen, print screen, go over into Paint, paste that into a new document, save that file, attach that you know, um, you know, JPEG or PNG file to an email to show me what's going on. And then I can, that gives me something to work with. I, I like troubleshooting if I have you know, information to work with, but if you're just like running around screaming and not really explaining what's going on, I can't help you. So make sure you tell me what's going on if you do need to have some extra help with that. All right, so here we're almost done with the collaborative project. You've written your analytical research report You've created the shareable link for it. You've recorded a presentation and shared that on YouTube. Uh, you've created your Open Lab project site, your website for the project, and then you've embedded your video presentation there. You've created a link to your analytical research report on Google Docs. So everything's almost done. Finally, there's two th things left to do. One thing is going to involve our open lab site and the other thing is going to be your uh, report on collaboration. So first off with the collaborative stuff that's going to be publicly facing, one of your team members needs to go back over to our open lab course site, create a new post, For the title, um, why don't we use uh, collaborative project on and then say what your topic is. What is the problem that you're researching? Okay. And then you'll, that one person is going to click into the content area and then write a very brief, like one sentence synopsis of what your project is about. Then you'll want to write something to the effect um, you can find our project website here period select project website here those three words 
go over to your project site, another tab, for example. Make sure you're the landing page. Copy that link. Go back over into the post that you're creating on OpenLab and add a link to that text. So again, just to show you how that works, how about you can view our here, okay? I'm going to select project website here. You see this icon here, it looks like a little chain link. I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna paste that link right there. And then I can either hit enter on the keyboard or I can click this little enter or submit icon to the right. You see there's now an underline for those words, meaning that's now a link. That's good. And then at the very end, hit enter. And then I would like you to type in all the team members' names. Something like, this project was created by each team member's name. So just do like each person's name, first and last name, uh, as um, a sequential list. like that. Uh, there's been questions that I've you know, addressed on you know, some folks' uh, papers. Make sure you are using the Oxford comma uh, or a, a serial comma when you're doing a list like this. That means that after each item in your list, before the conjunction, and or or, you have a comma. Um, in British usage, they omit this comma. But in American English, we know, I think rightfully so, that it creates confusion when you don't include this extra comma there. So we include that extra comma uh, when we create a list like this. After you've done that, uh, make sure that you're on the document tab here. In categories, uh, let's see, we need a new category here, so I'm going to add it right now. We'll call this um, collaborative project. Okay. So you'll put a check next to collaborative project, click publish, and then your project is almost complete, almost done. You've done the bulk of it. The only thing that you, you and your team have left to do is the report on collaboration. So if we look back over at the syllabus, is this collaborative 500 word report on collaboration, 10% of your grade. Now for this, I don't want you turning it in on your um, project website. Uh, this is something that I would like you to email the shareable link to me so that I can you know, read it online. Uh, only one team member needs to send me that email, but as I've said before, with all team emails uh, between you, know, one team member and me, make sure that you also carbon copy or CC all the other team members on that email. So pick somebody in the team to send me that email. And in your new Google Doc, so make a, a totally new Google Doc for the report on collaboration. Make sure all the team members have access to it so that everybody can contribute. And each team member should write a paragraph about his or her contributions to the project. So when you if you're you know going to meetings, if you're texting with other team members, if you're doing research, if maybe you worked more on, say, the slide deck for your presentation, uh, but less work on the website, say that. 
let me know who did what on the project overall. It's important for you yourself individually to be keeping track of what you're doing on the project. That's good practice to get in for the workplace because it's ultimately up to you to always keep track of what you're doing and to always have evidence of what you're doing on different projects that you're assigned. This is useful not only for accountability if say someone says you know you didn't do something well you can come back and say that you did but also useful when you go out for promotion uh, whenever you're having annual or quarterly reviews uh, to look at the progress of your employment all these times if you have documentation like evidence of the work that you do you're going to be in a much stronger position to be able to you know obviously maintain your employment be able to work up um, the the ladder for more pay promotions etc so this is practice for that okay so keep track of what you're doing so that you can write this paragraph about your contributions to the project and then finally together meaning everybody in the team together should contribute to this describe in one or more paragraphs the challenges that you faced in building your collaborative project and how you tried to work around those challenges. In some cases you might have been able to solve the challenges. There might be some cases where things didn't work out as planned and that's okay. I want to know the good and the bad. Okay. Once you've completed this document make sure you read over it also for grammar, for syntax, you want to make it look good. Make sure everybody's name is at the top as contributing to this. And then again, you're going to create a shareable link. You just click on share up here in the upper right hand corner. Only one team member needs to do this. Click share. Um, let me change that back. And then anyone with the link is a viewer. Copy that link and then have one team member write an email to me CCing all the other team members and in the email just say you know Professor Ellis here's our team's um, report on collaboration include the just copy and paste that link into the email okay just to make sure I'm clear on that I'm gonna like start a new email here write it to J Ellis at C tech.cuny.edu in the CC box make sure you put all of your teammates subject will say report on collaboration dear we'll say professor Ellis I think it would be fair to go ahead and say our team just submitted our collaborative project on open lab as a new post on our open lab course site please find attached our teams or maybe not attached please find below a link to our teams report on collaboration Best your name and then copy and paste that link and again before you send me that that email I would recommend opening another browser on your computer that's not logged into your Gmail and Google Drive account and test that link to make sure that someone who is not logged into your account can access that document um, don't share the document with me as an editor because I don't have a Gmail account associated with my school email address which means you sh you add me as an editor using my school email address I will not be able to read or see the work that you've done and I will not be able to grade it and it'll probably irritate me and I'll have to email you back and say I can't read your work you need to send me a new link so make sure that you're paying attention in the lecture about how to share this properly as simply a link for viewing. Uh, anyone with the link 
is able to view your document so that we avoid any problems with me being able to see your work. Because ultimately you do want me to see your work, right? So that I can give you the grade that, you, that you've been working towards. All right, so that's everything um, for the project coming up. So for this week's weekly writing assignment uh, is going to be the same as our last week's uh, weekly writing assignment. I want a different person from your team than who has previously emailed me uh, an update on your project. I want a new person in the team to send me an email CCing all the other team members just letting me know what you as a team have been working on. If you're still writing the analytical research report, doing that research, let me know that. If, if some of you are doing that research, but other, like maybe one team member said, hey, I can build that website easy, and they started on you building the architecture for the website, that's fine too. You can delegate these responsibilities uh, for the different parts of the project. Um, but I do want to see everyone contributing their equal fair share. Uh, if at any point as you guys are working have any problems with an individual team member, you need to involve me as soon as possible. Let me know what's going on. Let me know who is maybe not responding to emails or not coming to meetings or not doing the work so that you know I can arrange a meeting where all of us, your whole team and me, can sit down, work out the problem, figure out how to get you all on track. Because ultimately I want you all to do well on this project, uh, but it does present new types of challenges um, for you all to complete this work. But I do want to maybe you just conclude with like a little bit of a story uh, that I remember from when I was an undergraduate at Georgia Tech. If you can imagine uh, you know, when I was an undergraduate, that was like the mid '90s, and I remember you know, hearing about a class that I thought was so cool, uh, but I wasn't you know, you know, high enough yet to be able to take that class. And it basically was a class on collaborative um, digital project production, so creating like you know, high quality digital projects like websites and. Um, not just websites, but websites that have you know, some kind of functionality maybe built into them uh, based on some kind of research that the students were doing. But what was the kicker about it that made it so cool was that half of the students were in Atlanta, Georgia at Georgia Tech. The other half were in Russia at a different university. And despite you know, time zone differences, despite your differences of being able to work collaboratively because in the mid 90s there was no Google Docs you know, there there was you know, no collaborative platform like that that made things easy that were turnkey um, and yet these students were able to use very rudimentary early like video conferencing technologies that at that time cost a lot of money uh, but you know, obviously were paid for by the school to complete these projects uh, and you'll know, be able to complete your know, very high quality projects despite these challenges. Now we are in an age where we have access to very low cost, very high quality digital tools both for collaboration and for being able to create high quality uh, deliverables whether it be with Google Docs, Google Slides, creating like you know, uh, presentations using Zoom, sharing those videos with YouTube, and then creating websites very quickly and easily using OpenLab. Um, but despite having access to all these things, the challenge I think still lies with our ability to coordinate our schedules, to be able to find times and communication channels where we can all work together. Um, and I think that one thing that you're going to have to keep in mind as you move forward with this project is that you know, sometimes it's going to be hard. Sometimes you're going to have to make sacrifices in order to do the work, whether it be the work in our class or the work in some other class. 
Uh, this was, I think, maybe for me, one of the breakthroughs that led to my being successful as, as an undergraduate. Because when I started out, I was failing classes. I mean, you know, all, in all honesty, shit was going down for me. But once I recognized that I needed to reprioritize, that I needed to make sacrifices of some things in order to be successful at others, uh, that things turned around for me. Now, that's easier said than done for you know, a lot of folks. I understand that. But it is something that I do want you to at least think about if it hasn't been something that you've seriously considered thus far. Because it is imperative at this point that you as a team pull together and complete this work um, by dividing and conquering it, by delegating responsibilities, by holding team members accountable to the things that they say that they can do. Um, this isn't something that you know, should be on the shoulders of one individual in your team, which is usually the way these types of things can go. But you know, the reality of it is when you're in the workplace, um, accountability is going to be king. And that's why I say for each of you to always document what you do, uh, what you contribute, and also if you have to shoulder more of the burden because you're in the workplace, accountability is going to you know, lead hopefully to your success and upward rise and for folks that you know, aren't pulling their weight you know, will fall to the wayside but in our class I think this is an opportunity for you all to take this seriously to do the work that's required of you to be successful not just for yourself but also for your team so that each of you are going to earn a good grade be able to close this chapter on your academic work and be able to move on. Um, but again, if there's any problems with you know, any folks at any point, make sure you involve me right away. Don't wait until the end and say, oh, so-and-so didn't you know, pull their weight. Well, if they haven't been pulling their weight, you can tell me earlier rather than later. Because as soon as you see that there's a problem, let me know. Whether it be as an individual or a number of different team members come together uh, to let me know. So I'm going to close things here. Um, pay attention to the lectures because at this point we're, we've been progressing to this point where more of the onus of the projects and of being able to do the work um, is not about hand-holding. It's about you, know, you being able to listen, to take in the information, and to use these different resources that I'm linking to uh, to complete the work. That being said, I'm still available to help you both during office hours or over email. Um, but at this point, you need to be pulling your weight uh, in terms of you know, using these tools and figuring out how to use these tools. Um, because another lesson to take from this is that when you're in the workplace, while there may be some things that you'll be taught, there's other things that you're going to be expected to learn and to master on your own in more of a sink or swim situation. It's good to get some practice of that now when we're in the safe environment of our class, uh, but nevertheless, you're still expected to, to do some of that work. Because, I mean, that should just be based on your own curiosity about how to use these tools, how to master them, and how to use them for your own purposes. So good luck with this. Um, you know, I know Thanksgiving is coming up this week. Please, 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 um, you know, uh, as you're out and about, mask up, maintain social distance. Um, don't think that the virus is not, you know, still amongst us because it is. And as you can see in the news, uh, it is ravaging our country right now. I do not want to see any of you sick. I don't want to see any of you spread the, the illness to uh, folks that are more susceptible to it, uh, particularly those with um, illness, uh, pre-existing conditions, uh, and the elderly. Uh, so you got to protect yourself. you got to protect others right now. Okay. Uh, so be well, stay safe, and I will be talking with you again next week, if not sooner, during office hours on Wednesday, 3 to 5 p.m.